sacrificing a flooded strand, Will Bargo. Looks like he's going to search for a basic island. Down to 19 he goes. Aether Vial was a card where, when it wasn't on the initial modern ban list, I think a lot of people kind of raised an eyebrow because it is such a powerful feature of Legacy for those tribal decks. But now we're starting to see the power of this card unlocked again in, in Merfolk. Uh, and modern, too. It's nice to kind of still just have it around. Vial's up to one here for Brian. And now here's the spreading seas to shut down the Mystic Gate. That'll cantrip past the turn back. Wall of Omens out there being a little bit annoying, but Islands to walk over here for the Merfolk deck. And cards like Wall of Omens do struggle to make an impact in matchups like Merfolk because of the amount of Island Walk in the deck. Tectonic Edge here for Bargo. Brian will activate Aether Vial, put a Curse Catcher on the battlefield. It's time to untap and take a draw step as Vial is going to work its way up to two counters. Here is an island. That is another curse catcher. And it's all about how you kind of sequence the threats right now. Think twice will happen in response to the second curse catcher. Pretty telling that Bargo's casting it now in response. Really must need that card. I, I think the big issue now is just a lack of white mana. Yep. When someone plays a colorless land like Tectonic Edge there with no need to do it right now, usually signifies that they're out of lands and no white mana. So I think Fargo just on the hunt here for white to start unlocking his hand. There's a Lord of Atlantis. And we got another one now. It's a Master of the Pearl Trident. And now an attack for three as the other Curse Catcher is summoning sick. Try again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there are two reasons you can't block Craig. You pick. Back to Bargo, we're going to go. Found a basic planes. Step one, but then he also needs a payoff card here as well. Yep. Craig is in some serious trouble right now. He's going to need another white source of mana and Supreme Bird to get himself out of the situation. Now, if he's able to do that, he's in great shape, but it is going to be pretty difficult right now. Does have a copy of Path to Exile, it appears in hand. Might be another copy of Wall of Omens, too. But for now, he'll pass the turn back over to Brian Brondoon. Vile going to go up to three. I think a big part of Merfolk's rise here has also just been spreading seas. Yeah. That, to me, feels like a huge reason. It's a pretty well-positioned card right now. Looks like it might be time for Path to Exile, and it is going to go after Master of the Pearl Trident. This deck just continued to quietly get additions. You had Master of the Pearl Trident come out. You had Master of Waves come out. You had Harbinger of the Tides come out. You know, just slowly but surely just got better. Yep. Dismember going to go after Wall of Omens with Path to Exile on the stack. Brian does not allow, want to allow Craig to make any sort of blocks here. If Master's off the table, then suddenly Lord of Valerius can be blocked. Yep. There's an island from the Path to Exile resolving. If I'm Craig, I would strongly consider flashing back to think twice before damage. If Brian wants to sacrifice a copy of Curse Catcher, you might as well save yourself the two points. Yeah. Looks like that is not the case, though. Now three oh. points. This is a Regery, still before damage. And it looks like he's going to take all that damage. And no flashback of Think Twice at all. A little surprising there. Perhaps he for, has forgotten it's in his graveyard. Can't yeah, take it with you, you know? Yeah, he's going to concede the game. He's going to pick up those permits, take those with him. So Brian Brondoon is going to win game number one here over Craig Bargo. Murphle up a game here over blue-white control. Pretty smooth sailing there for the fish deck. Oh, for sure. I mean, you know, Craig was never able to do much of anything except provide a blocker, which was easy for BBD to work around through Island Walk. 
and one removal spell is just not enough to get it done. Sideboards is where we're heading. We will start with Bargo and his two Relic of Progenitus. He's got a Crucible of Worlds, two Timely Reinforcements, two Celestial Purge of Endillion Click, a Glenel Under Archmage, two more copies of Supreme Verdict, a Stony Silence, and three to spell. Those Verdicts are going to be very helpful. Yeah, he gets to go up to a full place as Supreme Verdict, so that's excellent for this matchup. I, I think the two copies of Timely Reinforcements are justifiable. They're not as good here as they are against decks like Burn or Zoo as blocking is challenging to do against Merfolk because of all the island walk, but he could still just be looking for more early interaction. On the other side of things here for BBD, you've got the uh, the 15 in front of him. Four copies of Tidebinder Mage, two Unified Wills, a Dismember, a Ghost Quarter, two copies of Spell Sky, two Dispels, one Negate, two copies of Relic and Progenitus. I think the counter spells here Negate the Spell seem very well suited for this kind of matchup. The Dismember, two copies of Unified Will as well. Two copies of Relic could come in if Brian feels like he's got some dead weight in the main deck and he wants to make it a little bit harder for Bargo to utilize cards like Snapcaster Mage. Well, these players will shuffle up here for game number two. Craig Bargo will be on the play. So we'll talk about SCG Game Night. Very popular promotion, of course, thanks to you guys. Furious George has been retired. However, the Kraken is here. Yeah, you see we're wearing that pin this week here in Cincinnati. It's the September kit available at all the stores participating in Game Night. They have the freedom to run Game Night however they want to. Just a consistent day of the week to get players in the store for some fun and friendly magic. The October kit coming down the pipeline in about a month here. Here's the Hippo. A little late to get signed up for October, but if you want to get the November kit, the Otter, head over to starcitygames.com slash game night. More information or contact your Star City Games organized play representative. And the Otter's name? Otter Von Bismarck. Otter Von Bismarck. Perfect. V-O-N. Von. Yeah. They've Otter even, Von Bismarck. They've even got a mustache. Otters sort of have a mustache. Yeah. So this is just perfect. It's easy, beautiful. Easy. StarCityGames.com slash Names creature itself. Yeah. We're basically printing money here. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Game number two here between BBD and Bargo in just a moment. Brian Brondewin, a player who has had a lot of success over the past handful of years. We saw him at the Players' Championship last year. He's a two-time Grand Prix champion as well. Just a lot of accomplishments here for Brian. And it's great because you've gotten to see this arc for Brian Brondewin, for Chris Van Meter, from Todd Anderson. Players who really upgraded from Open Series and PTQ level grinders to Grand Prix champions, regular participants on the Pro Tour, top eating invitationals. It's really happened over the last three or four years and you've gotten to see that arc if you follow these people at these tournaments or at StarCityGames.com in their columns. You see the four invitational top eights, 12 Open Series top eights, three Grand Prix top eights, including two wins, Grand Prix New Jersey and Grand Prix Louisville. Was a high school valedictorian, learned to play magic in college, and was studying computer science, but said, I want to cast spells instead. And that's a relatively late bloomer when it comes to playing Magic amongst our top players. You saw Chris Anderson, sorry, playing the game at age four. Most of the players I, I feel like we have regularly featured started in middle school, maybe high school. So for a player as successful as BBD, college is a pretty late start. And it's kind of late in the game to get it going, isn't it? Yeah, I would say. For a player of his resume at this stage, been playing Magic for what, eight or nine years? That's really not that long. And it's very impressive because a lot of the success has come in Legacy. That's yep. where, you know, he has a Grand Prix win there and all sorts of open series success. And that's a format where I feel it, it's daunting even for me sometimes to be playing it and covering it because of all the old card interactions and just the, the sheer depth of the card pool. There's a lot to keep up with. And I started playing Magic during Revised. I grew up playing with Force of Will and Dual Lands and, and some of these interactions. So when I see players who are a little bit newer to the game, uh, really have a lot of success in Legacy, that I think is a testament to how hard they work because you have a lot of information you have to absorb to be able to play that format fluently. Yeah, I think of, you know, Justin Upple. Yes. A young player from the Indianapolis area who had a lot of success early on in Legacy and it's just, that is, that's impressive. Because he's like, you know, I think he might be 17 or 18 now, but still, that's pretty gosh darn tough to do. Yeah, I remember that was the first thing that really took me when, I, when we were covering Jacob Wilson for, for the first time was how fluent he was with, with Teamer Delver, given, especially given his age. Yep. Because how do you just navigate games of Legacy that effectively when these cards are worded differently, there's so many of them, and uh, you're probably encountering cards sometimes that you've literally never seen before in your life. Bargo will be on the play. He's going to keep. Bron Dune will keep as well. Again, over 200 away. Flood of Strand is where Craig will start again. Muta Vault is where Brian will start. No Aether Vault to go with that Muta Vault. Flutter strand number two here for Bargo. 
He'll just pass the turn back over to Braun Dillon. But without Vile, this game is going to be very challenging for Brian to navigate if Bargo finds a copy of Supreme Verdict. That's going to be the real challenge. Mutavault will fire in here. Now, there is some risk here, but if you assume the removal spell that Bargo has, if any, is Path to Exile, at least you get a replacement land. It's not like he's opening himself up to Lightning Bolt or sort to Plowshares. Mm -hmm. It does not appear as though Bargo has something like Last Breath. You know, some sort of way to really punish this. Probably not happening. Yeah. So mutavault has gone. Island coming on the battlefield there for Brian. Now we head back to Bargo. There's Glacial Fortress. Oh, we're heading back to BBD. Turn number three. Already things going much better for Bargo in this game than yeah, last. Yeah, this is a much different game. Here's a Cavern of Souls. Things could get a little more difficult now. Making his land drops, has double white, under no pressure. Merfolk is, of course, the name of Cavern of Souls. Merrill Reachery, uncounterable. And Bargo will sacrifice that flooded strand. He's gonna get a basic island. Does have Hollowed Fountain in his deck list, but not as many as you would think. There's only one. Yeah, that's pretty common of the blue-white list that I've seen recently. A lot of basics, and there's a lot of mana fixing that has nothing to do with the whole fetch land, dual land thing. Like, you have four copies of Celestial Colonnade, you have Glacial Fortress to fix your mana as well. So uh, you get to save yourself a lot of points of damage in the aggressive matchups by de-emphasizing how many Ravnico duels you have in the deck. Time for Bargo to untap. And he'll take a draw step. Another copy of Path to Exile. And Snapcaster Mage plus Path to Exile and multiple copies of just Path. It's actually a pretty good avenue to go through to beat Merfolk. Now, Brian does have needs for the mana and to have mana fixing, so it's not the end of the world for him to get in Path, but this is giving Bargo the breathing space to get to his late game, which is much better than Brian's. And we're talking Restoration Angel then. Jace and Gideon and Elspeth. There's a ghost quarter. That's going to go after Cavern of Souls. This, an extremely loud declaration that Craig is on counter spells here. Sure sounds like it. Needs to get the cavern off the table. There is an island. It's funny because it, you know, if you just look at it in terms of who does the game feeling like it's going well for, you'd probably say Bargo at this stage. He's keeping his head above water and, and killing a bunch of stuff. But if you look at these exchanges just purely in terms of card economy, Bargo's way down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. His Ghost Quarter, his initial path to exile, these are all sources of card advantage for Brian. And early on in the game, when Brian's still developing, it's not like Path has no upside for BBD. He needs the islands. He needs more mana to work with. Here's Master of Waves. That's not too impressive right now. And you see Bargo's down to four cards in hand. EBD with five. EBD with five lands in play to Bargo's three. Mana Leak is going to be hit by a Spell Pierce. An Elemental will join from the Master of Waves. And now we're going to head back Bargo's way. Though Master in this matchup, not particularly good. No, but I think... BBD might be planning for it at this point because of the path and the second path and now the Ghost Quarter. He's just going to try to play a card advantage game. He's going to play one threat at a time. Force Bargo to answer on a one-for-one -one basis. Take the sting out of the sweepers if Bargo happens to have it. The card advantage game right now is definitely favoring BBD, and it's all because of the cards that Bargo has played. Yeah. Here comes Snappy. No blocks to be had. Follow up here for Bargo. It's a kitchen fix. 
So that'll come in. Gain two life. Bargo, as far as I told is concerned, sitting pretty. Braun doing it on tap. Brian will draw. The question now is just how much inevitability does Bargo have at this stage? He's definitely done an excellent job of protecting his life total at the exchange of a lot of cards. If his late game is a hammer lock, that should be good enough. But if he doesn't have an appreciably better late game, then BBD is going to be able to capitalize on all the extra cards he's gotten over the last couple turns. Spreading seas comes down. It's a very odd game. I, I agree. It's a very odd game. There's Manamo. And now we're going back Craig Bargo's way. Restoration Angel appears to be the draw. It's weird because, you know, Brian does have more cards, more lands. It feels like he has more everything, but it doesn't feel like he has very much going on. No, but I think that he's not rushing his threats out there because Bargo could have sweepers. He's in a pretty good position to block right now. And as long as BBD has counters and Bargo is not making all of his land drops, BBD can kind of take his time here. Mm -hmm. The only thing that he can really never stop is Supreme Verdict. And the game is shaping up in such a way right now that it doesn't look like that's a huge concern. Beautiful is the land there for Brian. He's got two on the battlefield, Manamo and then just a bunch of islands. So not, I mean, the Muta Faults are of course important, but it seems like Bargo's kind of got those handled at the moment. They are three threes now, however. We can't forget that because Master of Waves. Maybe Brian hoping for him to make a mistake here. Well, I think, I think Brian is also trying to make it really juicy for Bargo to play Restoration Angel. I think that BBD has unified will in hand. Yeah, I like this idea from, from Craig. There's no reason to really get too fancy at this point. He can just say, I'm at 22. Yeah, he's got, he's got like to play with. Here's Restoration Angel. Gonna activate Mutavault. Now play Unified Will. And I think this was the line that the BBD was trying to set up here. He really does not want Bargo to resolve Restoration Angel at this stage. It, it would be the best creature in play, and blinking out of Kitchen Finks is problematic as well. It would be bad news for sure. And I think that that attack with the Muta Vault there was to try to make it juicy enough for Bargo to play the Restoration Angel. It ends up he did it anyway at the end of the turn, but that was definitely on BBD's radar. Here come the attackers. Now Bargo's trying to maybe get Brian to make a mistake. We'll see. Because he has Path to Exile in hand, so he'd like him to maybe fire up that Mutavolt, try to block with your 3-3, path away the Master, get some trades going. Yep. At least it certainly feels that way. Time to attack. And BBD's got enough life to work with at this stage where I don't think he needs to make any sort of risky block here. Yeah, it's interesting. I think both players have enough life to work with where they're not going to make any risky blocks, at least for right now. Maybe a little further down the road. Looks like Master of Waves is going to block, however. This is a way of hedging a little bit against another Restoration Angel. You get to see it right away. Mm-hmm. Master Waves will trade with Kitchen Fink. Snapcaster Mage will come across. Bargo will pass the turn back. Time for Braun doing an untap. Take a draw step. Got to spell in hand. Picked up a copy of the file. Little late. A touch. It looks like BBD has drawn quite a few lands here, which makes the Path to Exiles that Bargo cast earlier much, much better for Bargo. And Brian will pass the turn back over to Bargo. BBD is still showing a lot of respect for Restoration Angel. Indeed. Just 
So it looks like we're on Brian's end step. Embargo just going to untap and take a draw here. Has a Snapcaster Mage in hand that he was considering casting. Mana Leak the draw step, not particularly good right now. Yeah, never a great card against Merfolk to be begin with, especially on turn eight, having packed BBD multiple times. The other card in Craig's hand that's a bit of a mystery right now is Cryptic Command, mm -hmm. which he actually can cast. Spreading Seas is not stopping him from casting that. A vial going to go up to one. Looks like Master of the Pearl Trident to draw here for Braun Dune. There is the master. From M13, many moons ago, helping out the Merfolk deck. And Bargo may want to use this as an opportunity to cast the Cryptic Command just because his hand is getting a little jammed up right now. Looks like he's just letting it resolve. Might be time to fire up a Muta Vault or two. Those are three power island walkers. Bargo's got plenty of islands. Looks like step one is Path to Exile. Dispel will counter that, or at least attempt to. Bargo's Mana Leak is actually on right now, so you have to imagine he's thrilled with the opportunity for this to do something. For sure. This is a great exchange here for Bargo. Yeah. It was looking like that Mana Leak was at risk of doing nothing, and instead it got to win a very valuable fight. So Master's gone, Muta Vaults are coming across for four. Bargo going to go down to 15. But Master was the main problem right now, and that's no longer there. Brondon will pass the turn back over to Bargo. Bargo going to draw. Still Cryptic Command, Snapcaster Mage. Remand was the draw. Here comes Snapcaster. I like continuing to attack. I do. You've got Snapcaster plus Path in hand and Cryptic Command. Yeah, Bargo can take a very aggressive position here and still have answers on the way back if BBD draws something impactful. I think Craig's sensing some weakness. Here come the Muta Vaults. Here's Snapcaster Mage. Targeting Path to Exile. And this is a really nice play here from Bargo. He can simply... cat target path and say go to blocks. If BBD vials in a Lord, Bargo can then use the path to take care of the Lord. If BBD does nothing, you block Snapcaster Mage in front of Muta Vault, use the path in a turn to take care of the other Muta Vault, board's clean. Now, this is a really well played turn here by Craig. Great turn. I'll take the two, I don't care about that. Going to 15 to 13, he's still got a cushion here. I think that a lot of players would have just gone before blocks path, and that's a way for uh, the Lord to enter the equation. Now you're taking three, and there's an island walker in play. And there goes Mutaval. Brian will get to search up another island. But those two man lands were very, very helpful, and now they're no longer there. Yep. We're going over to Bargo with the Snapcaster Mage, Cryptic Commander, Remand in hand. Didn't get a great look at his draw step. Well, it's about time he drew a land. Figured he would eventually. There's an attack for two, pass the turn back. Vile activation, there's Master of the Pearl Trident. Back to Braun Dune we go. Looks like Lord of Atlantis the draw. Here's an attack. Before damage, Lord of Atlantis. The thing about Merfolk is it can hit in bunches. Yep. And this is a sequence that's pretty hard to manage, you know, certainly not by blockers whatsoever. Counter spells are very rough here as well. Curious to see how Bargo's going to use his Cryptic Command. It's been sitting in his hand for some time now. There might be some interest in picking up his Snapcaster Mage with Cryptic Command, draw a card, be able to Snapcaster Mage, flash back another copy of Path to Exile, slow these lords down a little bit. He needs to have another white source of mana. I suppose if he's going the Cryptic Command route, he could do that. Yep. That's a lot of finagling. I mean, you're going through a lot of work to get that thing off the table, or to at least break up this lord chain, but yep. it is causing some problems right now. You can also attack, and if BBD blocks, then you can bounce the other one. Yeah. And trade, which is very good. 
I think attacking is a great first step. See what's going on. An issue here for Bargo is he has a lot of counter spells in his deck. They are not very good against Merfolk, even under the most optimistic of situations. And with BBD having a vial in play, they're almost unusable. Bargo got a good break there to be able to take care, uh, to do something with the Mana League a couple turns ago. He has a Remand in hand that's worth very little. Lord of Atlantis will be blocking. I think Craig Vargo will be cryptic commanding now. Almost has had his hand forced. This is some risky business here, because if this fails, a Bargo, lot can go wrong. Vargo's in trouble. Yeah. But it's going to work out okay. I think Vargo may have picked up a copy of Supreme Verdict. Yeah, he did. But Vile does a nice job playing around Supreme Verdict. Yep. Now BBD is running very low on total resources mm -hmm. here, but uh, the way the game's playing out, that Supreme Verdict may not be worth much more than a one for one. Brown Dune will draw, copy of Merrill Regery. So that'll come down. Pass the turn back over to Bargo. Bargo's drawing. Bargo's passing. And that's probably the fastest turn Craig has taken all match. And now an issue here on BBD's side of the table is Bargo's just been missing land drops. He's had some inefficient turns at various spots. His hand's got to have spells in it. Mm -hmm. There's no way it's three lands. So uh, it's a tough way to proceed here. I'm with you. I'd be very cautious. Cryptic Command. I think now we might see Pargo do Cryptic Command here to cycle into Supreme Verdict. Mm -hmm. Looks like that was on the draw step that he cast Cryptic Command. Now he gets to cast Verdict if he'd like. It's pretty hard to pass up Supreme Verdict here. Get these two things off the battlefield. Vile. Here comes Lord. Brown doing all draw. And you see here, just a mitt full of counter spells. Yeah, you gotta take your, gotta take a chance now. He just gotta, he's just gotta cast it on the first thing he can cast it on. Yeah. They're spreading seas again. Now Supreme Verdict is shut out. That's true, and he did he drew one off the he drew one excuse me off the remand. Lord of Atlantis coming across for two. Over to Bargo. Needs white mana. I believe timely reinforcements may have been the draw. Yep. Life total is eight to eight, though. Yeah. So it's just three one one tokens against a deck that can possibly island walk right through you. He does have an interesting trump card in his hand, however, right now. He has Sphinx's Revelation. And I think that's the card I'm playing towards here from Bargo. A card we haven't seen in a long time since it rotated out of standard dominated that format. I would strongly consider, if I'm Bargo here, simply passing to BBD and casting Revelation for the full amount of BBD's upkeep. In the upkeep, yeah. yeah. I think it's a little risky to cast on your own turn. It's about the same thing. BBD's not pressed for mana, so... I think the operations are slightly better if you wait, but this is okay, too. This will be for three, so three life will be gained as well. An island is draw number one. Glacial Fortress is two. Detention Sphere is three. There's the island. I, I like, actually, not playing the Glacial Fortress there. Conceal the information. It's a small thing, but I think it's a thing that matters. Harbinger the Tide's going to come down. That's a 3-3 three, three because of the Lord of Atlantis. Here come the beatdowns. Get you for five, put you to six. Relic Progenitus was the draw for the turn. That's an attempt to slow down Snapcaster Mage. Flooded Strand, an easy one to exile for Bargo. Back Bargo's way we're going to go. I think we'll see Supreme Verdict here in just a moment. Tectonic Edge, the draw. They aren't kidding when they call it blue-white control. Yeah, Bargo has played a pretty passive game the last couple turns. I think he's ready to turn over. Yeah, you know, he's the one thing he's got to do is got to find a way to win. 
Got timely reinforcements. And that's going to be kicked up next turn. He'll at least be gaining life. Right. Got to wait for BBD to deploy a creature. Relic going to get cashed in. There's a Muta Vault. Fortunately for Bargo, he's got a Tectonic Edge in hand, so he's got that covered. Take a draw step here. Kitchen Fink's not bad. A lot of good weapons. Curious where Bargo wants to start between this, Kitchen Finks, and Timely Reinforcements, because you can tell he wants Timely Reinforcements to actually do something. I, I think it's fine for, for Bargo to basically ignore that that card is in his hand unless BBD stabilizes what's happening right now and starts deploying a second wave of stuff. Vile activation, Harbinger of the Tides. Rondoon will draw. Three mana. Cura Great Glass Spinner. Flying's not bad here. No, flying will play. Flying will play right now. An island the draw here for Bargo. Still has that mana leak. Detention Sphere is not a bad play here. It's not great because of Cure right now, but that Vile has caused quite a few problems. And with BBD down to one card in hand, he would be low to get rid of that, de that Detention Sphere this way, unless he feels like in the face of Cure, there's just nothing else for him to do. Here comes the Finks. Interesting. But with Bargo's hand, he may be in trouble on the way back. Timely reinforcements, detention sphere. And a, if that's a counterspell, I think a, a lord could just be lethal here. A I guess lord. the tectonic, the tectonic edge. Oh, tech edge. You have to, we'll have to take a look at the wording on Kira. Because tech edge versus Kira. Yeah. I think it's spell or ability with Cura, so the tech edge activation would just get countered, right? Yeah, I th yes. Whenever this comes to the target of a spell or ability for the first time. And BBD can simply respond to the, it, you know, he activates Mutable. If Bargo goes in response. Just activate again. Activate again. Yeah. So I, I think that Bargo might have gotten himself into some trouble here not using the tectonic edge in response to Kira. I think Bargo might have gotten himself killed here. I don't know if Brian has a Lord, because he needs a Lord to get it done. He has one. It looks like he wins. He's only going to go down to two, so no Lord here. I think his draw was Harbinger of the Tides. Bargo going to untap. It's time for him to draw. The upshot here for, for Bargo is now timely reinforcements is very good. Yeah, it's very, very good now. It's everything he wants. Creatures to jump block with, get my six life, the full amount. But he can still get killed by a Lord. There is timely. He's up to eight, he'll get three soldier tokens. However, as you mentioned, a Lord is still very problematic. And the Tech Edge is basically blank now. Kitchen Fink's going to come in. I'm curious to see what Brian will do here, because he has Harbinger of the Tides in his hand. 
but if Craig redeploys, it's a little bit scary. But he's going to bounce that. Yeah, he's banking on Bargo not being able to redeploy this. Mm -hmm. Also, BBD just needs to protect his life total here. Going from five to two suddenly means that these tokens are a, a big concern. Detention spheres in hand here for Craig Bargo, but Cure a great glass spinner causing problems. There's D sphere. Okay. Okay. I like that play. It's the best it's going to do here. Yeah, but it's actually pretty good. Allows, gonna... allows him to redeploy the Finx. Yep. Smart play. But through all of this, a Lord is still lethal. Yes, it is. Finks will bring him up to 10. But a Lord, as you mentioned, will still be lethal. So let's see what Brian Brondoon's draw step is. A lot of Lords in this deck. We know that. Take a draw. Didn't get a great look at it. I believe it was Negate. That's not a Lord. Negate could be good down the road. But for now, Kira's going to attack. Bargo's going to go down to 8. Back to Bargo we go. These two really slogging it out here. BBD's played a great game here. <laughs> Felt like from the opening bell, basically everything went Bargo's way. The pace of the game, he's found Supreme Verge, a lot of his cyborg cards, and uh, BBD's still kicking here. Still drawn to a Lord, potentially. Lord of Atlantis. And that might just do it. Yep, time to fire at Mutavault. There's an activation of Vile. Here's Lord of Atlantis. Bargo going to take a look at his hand. And he's going to realize there's nothing he can do to get out of this situation. You don't expect to see Merfolk win the long game against blue-white control, a deck that is with all Sphinx Revelation, what feels like five Path to Exiles, a bunch of counter magic, multiple cryptics cast. But at the end of the day, all I can do is set his hand down and disbelieve. Brian Brown is going to win this match here against Craig Bargo, two games to zero. Merfolk will take down blue-white control, and for BBD, number 22 on our Season 4 leaderboard, he moves on to 6-1. and one. I think that BBD did a great job of... He, he made sure the game was kind of play, played at his pace to the extent that he can manage it. He did a very good job of extracting the most out of every single card, which was really important after he got Path and, and Ghost Cord. He needed to make Bargo sort of feel the card advantage that BBD had accrued in those early turns. And Brian also did a, a very good job of sniffing out the Restoration Angels when that was on the radar. Did a good job of sniffing out the removal spells. And uh, for Bargo there, you know, you see one of those weird interactions, a uh, modern Kira plus Mutavault. The tech heads there, I think Bargo was, you know, getting a little fancy with waiting for the last possible moment. Wanted to keep him play because he has Sphinx's Revelation in his deck, so he's always got need for, for mana, hypothetically.